Welcome to Postcolonial Space. I'm Masood Raja and in this brief video I would like to talk about my experience this semester of teaching online because of COVID-19 and what strategies I have used to prepare my classes and how I'm planning to do that over a semester. Uh, my hope is that some of these strategies might work for you and that you might learn something new. And if you do, please do let me know in the comment section. And uh, I will share also later in the semester as to what has worked and what has not worked for us. Now, uh, we do hope that, you know, we get through this pandemic all of us safely but maybe these experiences will be useful in the future whenever we have to decide on you know whether to teach online and how to teach online so that's my hope so thankfully our institution was very careful in planning the fall semester and those of us who had any acute health conditions were automatically given the permission to teach online. There was no insistence that we must teach online. All we had to do was fill in a form. So that means throughout the summer I knew that I will be teaching online and I knew which courses I will be teaching. Now keeping that in mind I started developing my course materials. Right, So I developed my syllabi I developed which books I was going to use and then I spent the entire summer pretty much recording possibly all the materials that I will cover in separate chunks and in separate lectures. Now some of those lectures are already available on my YouTube channel and you can see those and you probably have watched them. But there was a purpose to that madness. What I wanted to do was, since I was also planning to, and I am planning to teach my classes synchronously, live, through the internet, what I'm going to use, the recorded videos are as a supplement to the reading. So my, what my students get for this semester is they have a list of readings. The syllabus is available on my website as well as on Canvas. And then they read, but they also have a pre-recorded lecture on the same text which they watch. They will do these two things and then we will hold online sessions. And so by the time they come to the online session, they have read the assigned reading and they have watched a video on it recorded by me. Or if there is no recording available by me, I will find something for them to watch. And then the live sessions, what I'm trying to do is I'm planning live sessions once a week at least for each class. And in my case, I'll be using StreamYard. Now StreamYard is an encoder which most people use to stream their lectures, live streams to YouTube. The disadvantage is that unlike Zoom, the students can't be on the screen. But the advantage is that they can still ask their questions through the comments. Of course, the lecture is streamed live, but as an unlisted file. To YouTube and all they need to do is there is no login required they just click on the link and they can watch you speak about any topic on the class and then they can ask their questions in the comment section and I've used it successfully previously last semester when we went online and of course if you have watched any of my webinars that's what I use to live stream my webinars. The best part of it is that every live lecture will be recorded, right? And that means that I can make an archive of our 
weekly live sessions available to my students so that if they want to go back and want to check what did we say in the first week session they can just click on the link and watch it again I don't have to do a fresh upload I don't have to do anything else it just stores there in my YouTube channel now of course you do need a YouTube channel which is enabled to receive live streams to do that hence you know my suggestion to all of you that you should start creating your own content and uploading it to YouTube and have a YouTube channel as graduate students. So these are some of the things that I plan to do. Now I am s supplementing my use of StreamYard and my recorded videos with the university provided software which is Canvas. But I'm not overwhelming my student with a lot of materials in Canvas because I have a full website that they can go to to look up what are we doing next to find more resources and we'll have live lectures and they have the recorded videos. So the only thing I'm using Canvas for is to collect their assignments. So the students will be uploading their weekly journals, their midterm and their final exam to Canvas and that makes their job easier because they don't have to email it to me and my job easier because I don't have to keep track of the emails. So in a way then I'm combining the traditional methods of reading by giving them a text to read, the technological means of recording my lectures and making it available to them to supplement the reading and then using the technology to live stream my lectures and the same technology is saving those lectures for future use and then I'm supplementing that entire technology package with the technology provided by my institution for collecting assignments. This is the process that I'll follow this semester. Now another thing to keep in mind which I learned last semester is that just as we are overwhelmed as professors and teachers, our students are also deeply overwhelmed, right? So we cannot construct these classes as complicated as they used to be in a face-to-face -face class, you know, medium. We have to make sure that we simplify our classes without losing the quality of it but also we have to keep in mind that our students may not have the ideal conditions to learn right so for that I will ask my students to let me know if they are having digital problems if they have problems of space right and I have further trained myself to accommodate them more if they send me a query to reply it immediately but also to constantly reassure them that my job is to teach them whatever is included in the course but also to make sure that they succeed. So I think for this kind of teaching content is important, how we deliver it is important but most importantly what is important is also to remind our students that we are there for them and that we are there to help and that they should not hesitate to reach out to us. So this is roughly my plan, right? Have some pre-recorded lectures, let the students read the materials, deliver online lectures, have those online lectures available as, recorded or as a recorded archive, and then collect their assignments and grade them through the software provided by my institution. I hope it works. But one other thing that I'm reminding myself is to constantly be open to changes and to not be so committed to my methodology that I refuse to change it even when it is not working. And the best way to find out whether or not it is working is to ask your students. So ask them, you know, is it working for them? If it is not, feel free to get their suggestions and see how we can improve it how you can improve it and I think that's how we will tackle this pandemic and teaching in this pandemic. We have to have institutional support. We have to insist that our superiors provide us the kind of technology that we need, right? And if not, suggest to them that 
what would make our job better and more effective. And then keep reminding our students that we are there to help them and that we'll try our best to teach them the best way possible and that if anything goes wrong, if they are running into any kind of technical, emotional or other problems, there are resources on our campus to help them with that. But if there is anything that I need to tweak in my instruction to make it a better experience for them, being receptive to that is going to be very helpful in this pandemic. So these are some of my ideas uh, as I prepare for my classes tomorrow and as I hope to deliver them over a semester. If you have anything to suggest, any new ideas, any technique that you are using which I could use and other people could use, please share it in the comments. If there is something that I've suggested that you like, please do let me know. If you have an idea that could even improve it better, please do let me know. And as always, if I can be of any help and assistance to you, do let me know through the comments and I'll be happy to do whatever I can to help you. And I will be back mid-semester probably to give you a report about how this entire exercise of trying to teach remotely during a pandemic has worked. Thank you so much and as always, I'm grateful for your support and for your presence in my life. Stay safe, take care of each other and peace and love.